Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, welcome back to this uh, course on combustion in air breathing aero engines. So as you have seen that uh, we have covered uh, quite a bit of ground uh, so far. Uh, we have talked about kinetics, we have talked about chemical equilibrium, we have talked about kinetics, oxidation mechanism of fuels, then we have looked into transport phenomena and then uh, we looked into the governing equations and after that we went to basically uh, the formulations for non premix flames and then we looked into a very ideal uh, kind of a non premix flame which is a chambered flame and then we looked into the droplet uh, evaporation and droplet combustion which is also an example of a non premix combustion okay now then uh, of course we have talked we have said that in nature or in by design fuel and oxidizers are separate um, uh, and then uh, of course uh, the when the meat uh, because of diffusion and because of the continuous consumption of this oxidizer and the fuel by the flame uh, uh, then a non premix flame is actually formed okay the non premix flame um, the different the, the, the issue is that in the non premix flame the fuel and the oxidizer are not mixed at the molecular level a priori and they only meet at the flame location itself and where they basically burn in stoichiometric proportions and as a result the, the flame temperature that is formed is the adiabatic flame temperature and uh, which is also the reason why non premix flames produces a lot of pollutions in terms of NOx, soot, etc. Okay. So, uh, those we have discussed about non premix flame, we have discussed uh, plenty about uh, droplet about uh, condensed um, uh, matter evaporation and then into droplet uh, uh, droplet evaporation and droplet combustion. Mm, also, but uh, as you know that there is another variant of uh, flames another in another mode combustion can happen uh, of course and that is in premixed mode. Okay. So, in the premixed mode uh, the fuel and the oxidizer okay, they are mixed at a molecular level they are perfectly mixed before combustion happens okay and uh, this is different from the non premix combustion uh, there are very, very quite a few differences with respect to non premix combustion but you will see that there are also quite a few similarities that is both essentially we'll see that uh, there is another in, in uh, flames that is uh, premix flames that we'll talk about those are also very strongly controlled by diffusion so, it is to be borne in mind that both the non premix flame as well as the premix flame they both are uh, in both processes diffusion plays a very important role and uh, we need to understand that very well. Mm, and then uh, so next we go into this uh, formal into this course into this in today's class where we will talk about laminar premix flames and uh, here we will see that these are the topics that we will cover. We will cover this rankin hugonio relations and you will see that these basically um, <coughs> talk about the how the thermodynamic properties and the in the burnt and unburnt gases can be connected by this sort of relations and very interesting uh, properties of this uh, of the different types of the modes of premix combustion that can happen uh, emerges from this kind of analysis. And then we will go into the laminar flame speeds uh, which is the most important property of our premix flame and we will go into different levels of derivation where we will do a phenomenological analysis just to give you an idea about what are the processes that are important. And and uh, then we will go into the chemical structure of the flames. Okay. So, uh, uh, premix flames as you see that though it is as we have discussed previously that uh, that when we compare we always compare premix flames with non premix flames in terms of the properties and the advantages they have and you will see that um, unlike uh, non premix flames in the premix flames one can readily control the temperature by just controlling the equivalence ratio and that gives an advantage because this allows you to have low temperature uh, not, not very low temperature but still lower than the non premix flame um, uh, temperatures one can achieve and one can design the combustion process accordingly. 
But then there are other challenges with the premix flame because you will see later that the premix flame is essentially a wave phenomena. And so you need to basically control the wave and do some design in the combustor to have its proper uh, to basically stabilize the wave. Okay. Mm, so there are very interesting uh, features that emerges from the premix flame. So mm, sometimes to control over over uh, to have a control nowadays in inner propulsion engines many of the uh, engines try to go towards a more and more premix mode from the non premix mode because as I have said earlier that the premix mode allows you to have better control over the over by over uh, to, to lower essentially the, the, the emissions NOx emissions, soot emissions, these can be much lower in, in, in case of premix combustion uh, with respect to those in non-premix combustion. So for that uh, it is very important to know premix combustion and uh, as I said that even modern gas turbine engines like previously previous generation gas turbine engines were very strongly non-premixed. Okay? So but the modern generation gas turbine engines for example the GENX engine that powers a Boeing 787 as you know that uh, those is those use this twin annular premix swallower combustors. Okay? So the, this, they, this, uh, this combustor happens in a partial premix mode. It's so, the, the, the idea is that from non premix you are trying to go to more towards premix to basically have a control over the emissions. So, it is important to first understand that why basically you can have a control over the over, over the emissions when you do premix combustion. So, we will take those things in a non in, in this class and we will also do appropriate comparisons with the non premix flames to basically understand it. But of course, it must be borne in mind that uh, this in a, in a combustor in an actual combustor uh, it is not a laminar premix flames. Uh, the, that, that we encountered these are very strongly turbulent premix flames that we encounter. But as you know that to understand something very complex you need to understand the basics first. Okay? So uh, that is why we will uh, we'll go deep into this uh, into this uh, uh, this discussions on non laminar uh, premix flames because only when you understand laminar premix flames we will be in a position to understand turbulent premix flames and which is what uh, happens inside modern or or, or postmodern uh, um, combustors that we encounter that we encounter or will continue to encounter in some uh, a few years to come. So, the, as I said that uh, that here we will discuss the 1D wave structures of premixtures. Okay. So, as we have seen that uh, non premix flame is basically diffusion controlled because we can assume that the reaction is uh, much much faster than the diffusion and uh, it is of course diffusion control and uh, we have seen that the flame stabilizes in the location where it is, um, uh, it is uh, essentially uh, in a um, the fuel and the oxidizer are essentially in the stoichiometric uh, proportions and the temperature uh, achieved is essentially at a um, is the uh, is the adiabatic flame temperature for the corresponding stoichiometric mixture. Okay. And so essentially it is a non-premix flame is essentially is purely controlled by diffusion and it is essentially it happens in subsonic flows. Okay. Now uh, premixture when you have a premixture that is when you mix in the fuel and the oxidizer say we when you mix methane with air or you mix hydrogen with air. Okay. So it can then readily react all right. Uh, now, once you ignite at a point then uh, then basically what happens is that a chemical wave which is essentially the flame uh, or uh, which is essentially as you will see later this either a deflagration or a detonation depending on its speed. A chemical wave is formed and that propagates through the mixture converting into product. So, if you have a tube like um, uh, if you have a long uh, tube uh, if you have a tube like this or if you have um, a tube a long tube like this. Uh, and this is uh, filled with uh, if, if this is entire tube is uh, say this is closed here and this entire tube is filled with fuel air mixture and then you ignite at this point. Okay, so then immediately a flame will be formed and uh, it, it can be of course uh, in different shapes but anyways in an ideal version uh, it will be a laminar flame will form and this will uh, propagate uh, onto this until the entire mixture is consumed. So essentially it is a wave uh, structure that is propagating through this entire tube and um, so uh, as you will see that uh, one of the basic descriptions of a premix flame is basically it is a wave uh, phenomena. Okay, so uh, the propagation rate, unlike in a in a, in a, in a the, as we have seen previously in the um, non-premix flame, the propagation, the the burning flux of or the or the or the burning rate, or the burning flux F, that was all that was proportional to basically the thermal diffusivity. So it's essentially was purely diffusion control. But here you will see that the reaction rates plays a very important role. All right, so uh, here. Uh, 
uh, it is you will see that basically it will be it will very emerge very clearly that in the premix frame both the diffusion and the reaction processes are equally important okay so when the reaction rate becomes very important then of course you cannot assume that it is infinite with comparison to the diffusions and then you have to basically consider the detailed reaction rates so it, it, you might have to consider detailed reaction rates of course a lot can be understood by considering the the one step reaction rates also and this is uh, because it is a wave phenomena it can either be subsonic or supersonic and the subsonic state will be essentially called deflagration and the supersonic state will be called detonation okay now first uh, we will um, uh, in this uh, we will go into this first description that is a rankin hickory or relations and uh, what this does is basically you have uh, in the you, you have a, if you have a premix flame the flame as you as you know because of the large activation energy is confined into a very very thin region so upstream of the flame and downstream of the flame these are there is no reaction happening okay because reaction is confined in a very thin region so upstream of the flame is of course reactants that is the fuel and the oxidizer mixture the downstream of the flame is of course the bond products and both are essentially in uh, the down is, is in uh, chemical is in uh, is in an equilibrium state okay uh, and uh, so we can assume that equilibrium state exists in the far upstream and downstream of the wave and uh, so uh, we will not consider in the first level description in this rankin hugoni analysis so we will not consider this um, uh, this uh, will not consider this um, non equilibrium process of diffusion reaction within the wave and we, as a result of that we will see that the wave speed will not be specified um, but then we will just try to equate try to somehow relate the downstream state of the wave with respect to the properties of the upstream state of the wave and vice versa and uh, of course uh, that will not give unless uh, un unless it is a very special case i will say as we will see that the wave speed will not be specified so you still to close the problem you have to specify the wave speed uh, but then without that uh, as long as that is specified uh, we can relate we will see that we can relate the downstream state and the upstream state of the wave in a very uh, comprehensive manner just by using the very basic governing equations of mass conservation, momentum conservation, energy conservation and where we do not have to consider details of the chemical kinetics because we are not essentially interested into the wave structure. The wave structure is essentially controlled by kinetics and diffusion processes but whatever happens far upstream and far downstream as you know the far downstream it is essentially in equilibrium state and uh, that is given by equilibrium relation. So, you do not need chemical kinetics to basically know that. So, you will see that this uh, solutions of this kind of an analysis will give you two branches one will give you a subsonic deflagration and wave and another will give you a uh, this is a subsonic deflagration wave and it will another will give you a sub supersonic detonation wave ok. Now, the wave speed will be as I said that uh, we will be analyzing will be uh, obtained by analyzing the wave structure and that is basically wave speed means the flame speed and that will come later. So, for now we will not consider the flame speed and we will consider this very idealized description that is shown here. Okay. So, what does it say? It says that, that uh, if we consider this uh, premix flame or this wave uh, which we consider to be in a in a in a stationary state with respect to the our our uh, say our laboratory coordinates then that if, if that is so then of course it has to be to sustain that structure uh, in a steady state of course it has to be fed by premix reactants and this premix reactants are being fed into the wave at a velocity u u and the burn products um, uh, and the and the premix reactants of course are converted into burn products in this wave structure which we are not specifying here and this uh, the velocity of the burnt uh, gases is essentially u b. So, similarly the properties upstream of this wave is given by rho u, p u and t u with subscript u means unburnt whereas, the uh, properties downstream that is in the burnt state is given by proper the rho b, p b and t b ok. So, these are the, the different states of the, uh, the upstream state and the downstream state of the unburnt state and the burnt state of the wave and what our objective in this analysis would be to have relation between them uh, between them and uh, of between the upstream state and the downstream state and we will not consider the wave structure. But as I said that the problem will not be complete without specifying the wave velocity and for that needs uh, will be put in as an external parameter all right uh, which should be specified by something else which we will not consider here. We will consider that that is to be given for this problem ok. So, what are the how do we arrive at this how do we relate the upstream and the downstream states which are in equilibrium of this wave. For that of course, as you know in any problem uh, fluid mechanics uh, essentially reacting fluid mechanics um, though we are not considering reactions here. So, here where there is some change of um, state happening in terms of that is the reactants going into products. So, of course, mass is conserved. So, then uh, if you write the continuity equation and you integrate that from upstream to downstream 
this is what you will find that rho u u u times uh, rho u u u is equal to that is the density of upstream times velocity of upstream is equal to density downstream or, or the density of the bound state times the velocity of the bound state and this is equal to f which is the mass flux okay it is not the mass flow rate it is the mass flux and we will also consequence call this as a burning flux because this is the flux which is being burnt and converted into products and then of course the momentum uh, so this is your um, uh, this is the momentum uh, the actual uh, which is one once again as you see that this analysis is in uh, purely in uh, 1d so we can basically if we what we can do is that we can take the complicated momentum equations and then we can just integrate around so then uh, uh, this is uh, what uh, you will get so this is what you get by integrating the uh, acceleration terms and this is what you get by integrating the pressure gradient terms along the one dimensional one dimension so this is uh, you get uh, rho u times u square plus pu is equal to rho b times ub square plus pb so this is uh, what you get we, I mean we can just sim uh, simply show this by considering the 1d momentum equation of course in a steady state that is uh, this was the momentum equation if you remember and is equal to minus dp dx so if you integrate between x u and x b d x and you will get is essentially and of course the rho is here and you will get and we can uh, just write rho u to be essentially f so f is constant so it comes out so f times u so f u u u minus or f b u b minus f u u u is equal to minus p b minus p u so f p is nothing but rho u u u so you find that or we can write as rho b u b so you find that rho b u b square minus rho u u u square is equal to minus p b minus p u and this implies rho u u u square plus p u is equal to rho b u b square plus p b so this is exactly what you get okay so we will not uh, uh, of course, we are here we are really, uh, this is just to show that if you consider the 1D equations uh, in the differential form in the PDEs we convert that to uh, uh, basically we convert that to ODEs because there is no time variation there is no variation in Y and Z. So, it is only in X variation and then you can just write down these things which is um, the um, you know, which is the momentum um, uh, uh, equation in the, uh, the integrated uh, momentum equation in x directions. So, this is it um, and then the energy equation is of course, you have the enthalpy, the H u and then you have which is the internal energy plus P y P, uh, P P V where V is the specific volume here. So, and then you have the kinetic energy term and then you have the burnt gas enthalpy and then you have the um, uh, burnt uh, gas velocity. Of course, you have to remember that this H u and H b are total enthalpy is and uh, even though there is reaction happening the total enthalpy is conserved because what happens is that the enthalpy of formation is converted to sensible, sensible enthalpy as combustion happens. So, this in individually this contains the enthalpy of formation and the enthalpy of and the sensible enthalpy. Okay. So, now you, you can get uh, by if you use these two things okay. if you use the, the mass and the momentum equations together. Okay. So, uh, if you combine them the, then you basically get something like this that is P B minus P U is equal to if you just consider the momentum equations uh, this is uh, just given by if you just take the rho u times u square and then you of course have left over uh, rho b and rho u in the denominator. But then using the mass conservation equation you can substitute rho u u is equal to of course this is also obtained by mass conservation equation. So, and you can uh, uh, of course substitute this and you get V B minus V u which are the specific volumes. Okay. So, these are the specific volumes and should not be considered with velocity. And then of course, if you uh, if you write that um, that sound speed is equal to root over gamma r t and uh, then you do this manipulations you will find that m u square. Okay, so, m u square is nothing but m u is nothing but the Mach number at the unburned gas which is nothing but u times c 
okay and uh, and this uh, um, uh, u times c u and this m b is nothing but u uh, u times c b uh, that is the ratio of the velocity to the um, acoustic velocity uh, to the acoustic speed and then you can write this equation okay so um, this gives you when you combine the mass and the momentum it gives a very interesting thing so it gives you that m u square there is a mark number square is essentially equal to p cap whereas p cap is nothing but um, P cap is nothing but P by P u and uh, V cap is nothing but V by V u uh, that is uh, with uh, respect to unburned gas and of course here the um, uh, oh sorry uh, P cap is uh, not P by P u P cap is essentially the ratio of P cap is, is equal to P u by P b and V cap is essentially V P cap is equal to P B by P U and V cap is equal to V B by V U. So, P cap is essentially the ratio of the, of the gas um, of the pressure at the burned gas with respect to the pressure at the unburned gas whereas, V cap is the ratio of the specific volume in the burned gas with respect to the specific volume in the unburned gas. And similarly, the uh, whereas uh, this M U is, is is nothing but uh, U U um, uh, is equal to nothing but M U is equal to U by uh, C U, which is the acoustic velocity. Uh, C U is equal to root over gamma T. Okay. So similarly, so you can write both in terms of the of the of uh, the um, uh, of in terms of uh, like uh, uh, so here is what we wanted that is we wanted to relate the the ratio the burn gas state to the unburned gas we wanted to relate the the two states that is the burn gas burn gas state to the unburned gas state in terms of the thermodynamic properties of the burn gas burn gas state to the thermodynamic properties of the unburned gas state so this is the ratio of uh, uh, of the burn gas pressure to the unburned gas pressure minus one divided by gamma times the specific volume of the burn gas with respect to the specific volume of the unburned and gas minus 1 is given by mu square. Similarly, this is also given by mb square. So, what does this tell you? This tells you a very interesting thing that of course, uh, these are essentially straight lines which pass through 1 1 where p cap is equal to 1, v cap is equal to 1 and you see this m u square is essentially always a positive quantity because it is a squared. So, minus gamma m squared is essentially the slope of this straight lines uh, p cap minus 1 and v cap minus 1. Okay, so, and because this is always positive, the slope of these lines are always negative. And also, we have to see that uh, that uh, another thing is that because because uh, we can write p cap minus one is equal to minus gamma m u square v cap minus one. As I said, that uh, p cap is the ratio of p b by p u. V cap is the ratio of v b by v u. Okay, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, as such uh, um, as a result of because uh, p cap minus 1 minus is equal to minus gamma mu square v cap minus 1 and this is essentially always positive. So, and this thing is always negative. So, it means that when this is positive this has to be negative or when this is negative this has to be positive. Okay? So, that means that if p cap is greater than 1 v cap has to be less than 1. That means that when uh, v cap and v cap is essentially the specific volume which is inverse of density. So, it means that when p cap is greater than 1 the density ratio is also uh, greater than 1 that is when the pressure ratio between the burnt and the unburnt gas is greater than the 1 the density ratio is also greater than 1 and you will see that this corresponds to later to the detonation stage okay, where the pressure and density both increase by crossing the uh, wave. Okay. I am not crossing the I'm not calling it a flame because detonation is not essentially a flame. A flame is essentially subsonic structure. Okay. So, crossing that chemical wave your peak pressure ratio and density ratio both increase. Okay. Whereas, in this case you see p cap is less than 1 v cap is greater than 1 that means pressure ratio is less than 1 density ratio is less than 1 and that is your deflagration state where both the pressure and the density drops by crossing the chemical wave. Okay. 
So, now we can go into another set of uh, lines because you see we have used we had three uh, conservation equations we had the conservation equations of mass, momentum and energy. So, using the mass and the momentum conservation equation we have arrived at this Rayleigh lines which are essentially straight lines passing through straight lines of where the variables are essentially p cap and v cap but that is the variables are uh, pressure ratio and, um, uh, and the specific volume ratio. So, uh, these are essentially the Rayleigh lines are essentially straight lines that pass through p cap equal to 1 v cap equal to 1 and the slope of them are given by of this set of lines are given by gamma m u square where m u square is essentially the rho is essentially um, the Mach number of the unburned gas which is also can be ratio uh, taken as a Mach number of the flame speed because the rho u u is we will see that is nothing but the flame speed ok. So, but this is not specified we do not know what uh, m u is or what u u should be for the flame to be stabilized that is why it is essentially the flame speed and um, but uh, we have found that uh, the interestingly uh, something more uh, we found is that that when um, p cap is greater than 1 v cap uh, must be less than 1 or when p cap is uh, when pressure ratio is greater than 1 the density ratio also must be greater than 1 and when the pressure ratio is less than 1 the density ratio also less, less than 1 and we have stated that the first condition corresponds to your detonation state and the second condition corresponds to your deflagration state ok. But then as we have not used the another equation that is so far we have not used the energy equation. So, we can also use the energy equation in alone or in combination with the mass momentum and energy equation with when the mass of the momentum equations and that is what we will do now. So, if you do that we find that if you use the mass momentum and energy equations we come up with the Huguenot alliance which is this uh, that is the enthalpy difference between the burnt and the unburnt gas oh, once again this is the total enthalpy difference this is nothing but half times v uh, b plus v u divided by times p b minus p u. Now of course this since because these are the total enthalpy differences now we can write them as uh, as we can write h b essentially equal to uh, h b 0 plus h b s minus h u 0 minus h u s ok. And uh, so, once you do that you can essentially see you know that the, the, the heat of combustion is essentially the enthalpy of formation of the products minus the reactants and that is uh, when the, from that you can basically get the uh, heat of uh, mm, uh, this heat release the chemical heat release uh, ok. So, um, mm, uh, which we have the definition of which we learned uh, previously that is it is essentially the uh, H 0 k times W k times uh, nu k double dash minus nu k dash divided by uh, your um, uh, with the reference species that is W f times molecular weight W f being the molecular weight times nu double dash minus nu f nu f double dash minus nu f dash. So, that was your chemical heat release or um, so that is let us write it down here this is essentially summation uh, k is equal to 1 to n h k 0 w k nu k double dash minus nu k divided by W f times nu f double dash minus nu f ok. So, this was uh, what we uh, uh, had uh, defined as chemical heat release and then uh, of course, we can relate the sensible enthalpy to the to the temperature using the specific heat ratio that is C p and once we do that we can write this. So, once we combine these two things we can write that uh, when uh, from here itself we can write that H v minus H u is equal to Q c times gamma by gamma minus 1 times P b this is of course, by P b by rho b is essentially R t v minus P b by rho b rho u is equal to R t u. So, from that using the ideal gas state we can go from directly from here to here and then equating these two things uh, together we arrive at this uh, uh, Hugoni uh, lines which are uh, nothing but these um, uh, things that is the uh, look at this very carefully and not go into the derivation but uh, the formula needs to be examined very very carefully these are very important. So, we see that the pressure ratio p cap um, at plus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 times v cap that is a velo that is a specific volume ratio minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 is essentially 4 gamma uh, plus 1 plus q c cap which is this guy mm, ok and q c cap means of course, uh, this thing over rho u by p u times q c uh, times gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, what this is? This is essentially we can it is in a hyperbolic form that is uh, hyperbolas are essentially uh, you see x y is equal to constant ok. Mm. So, it is essentially in that form. Uh, so, uh, with the asymptotes uh, uh, um, uh, uh, so you see the uh, this 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 things p cap plus uh, uh, this is uh, so it it will generate lines like this 
as you know that whereas these asymptotes are given by these things. So, the asymptotes here are essentially this one gamma the asymptotes of p cap is essentially gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 that is this part whereas asymptote of v cap is essentially gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 this is this thing. And now the uh, thing is that um, we can also uh, this equation of course, we have derived for uh, combustion um, uh, where we have essentially equated the burnt state with the unburnt state of combustion, but uh, we can also have a we can also reduce to a state where there is no combustion. So, what we have to do is that we have just have to set this to be equal to 0. So, when we equal to set this equal to 0 we find that this uh, then this line passes to 1 1. So, if you remember that 1 1 was also the line through which the Rayleigh lines pass. So, when you have do not have any combustion, so these two essentially intersect at these lines. So, we will see also that it will intersect somewhere else as well. So, this is what you get by uh, by uh, the, by combining the rank in Hugonio and the and the Rayleigh lines. If you so if you remember the Rayleigh lines was given by this. P cap minus 1 uh, is equal to gamma i mu square times V cap minus 1. Okay. So, this is the Rayleigh line, we will just only use the mu. Okay. Whereas, the Hugonian lines. or Hugonio curves are given by p cap plus gamma minus 1 oh sorry it is not visible in that part. So, p cap plus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 times v cap minus gamma minus 1 by gamma minus plus 1 is equal to 4 gamma by gamma plus 1 whole square plus 2 q c cap normalized chemical heat release times gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1. Okay. So, we have seen that this Rayleigh lines basically are arrived from mass and momentum. Okay. Whereas, these lines essentially arise from mass, momentum and energy. Conservation. Okay. The difference is that these as you see that these are essentially straight lines, okay. whereas these are essentially hyperbolas. So, these lines that you see in this thing if you plot these lines in the p cap v cap diagram. So, this axis is essentially p cap and this axis is essentially v cap. This is a very very important and fundamental diagram in combustion. So, we have to really go into this. V cap uh, this is the v cap axis, this is the p cap axis and this is the uh, uh, this is the 1 1 point. Okay. Uh, this is the point where uh, p cap is equal to 1 and v cap is equal to 1. Okay. Now, these lines if you plot these Rayleigh lines these are these lines. Okay. And of course, it depends on the slope. So, as the mu changes we do not know what the mu is right now. So, we can have different sorts of these lines for different mu's like this, but all of them has to meet at p cap v cap is equal to 1. Okay. And also here, so this this set as you see corresponds to large this is 
this part it corresponds to p cap greater than 1 and v cap less than 1. Whereas, you can also have another part as you see this part corresponds to p cap less than 1 and v cap greater than 1. Okay. So, as you will see that when p cap greater than 1 that is when the pressure rises when pressure rises in the combustion gases pressure rises in crossing the flame we will call that a detonation when pressure drops across the flame we will call that deflagration. So, this part essentially corresponds to the deflagration and this part essentially corresponds to the detonation. Of course, there is nothing that is possible here because of the slope because the negative nature of the slope. If it something comes in this part then that will have a gamma mu square to be positive and that is not possible. So, everything has a negative slope in these lines all right. So, now these are the straight lines and then we all can also plot these Huguenot curves. Okay. So, which are basically this rectangular hyperbolas which are these lines okay. and here you see that the parameter that changes we do not have any Mach number square, but we have a q c. So, this is the point where q c equal to 0 then it uh, intersects through the passes through the 1 1 curve, but then as you increase q c this curve shifts in this side all right. Now, the of course, uh, as you have seen that the previous one the, uh, the Rayleigh lines are given by mass and uh, momentum conservation whereas, the Hugonio curves are essentially given by um, uh, are essentially uh, uh, given by uh, your uh, uh, your uh, mass and uh, energy conservation. So, uh, of course, all three should be conserved simultaneously and these two equations should hold simultaneously. So, that where these the points where these equations are simultaneously hold that is the point of intersection of the straight lines that is the Rayleigh lines with this hyperbolas that is the Hugonio lines those are basically our acceptable states of combustion that we can have. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, we need to find out the points of intersections of this of these uh, straight lines and the um, uh, and this uh, 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 hyperbolas. Uh, 